All right, peace, family. If you all can hear me, let me know if you can hear me. Uh, If you can hear me, let me know. We're still waiting for um, our brother to, to log in. But for those who are on, and if you are listening, let me make sure the volume should be good. Volume is up here where I am. So we thank each and every one of you all for tuning in uh, every week. And we pray that you all have been enjoying, enjoying the, uh, the interviews that we've been blessed to do. I sent out some invitation to some people, so I'm looking to get some responses. We have some uh, some good people, inshallah, coming coming up. So uh, you should be stay tuned for some big announcements. Stay tuned for some big announcements. And what I want to do just to lay the lay the groundwork to talk about some stuff. One second, you all. So as we wait to our brother, brother Abdul Aleem, I think that's him. Here we go. No, that's, that's, that's our brother, brother Bourbon. All right. As we wait for him to, uh, to log in, I want to just go over some things, if you all don't mind. So when we talk about these testimonies, if you know me, many people know me, I'm big on trying to get some type of quantitative da data to be able to measure um, what we're actually doing. And so you should see here on your screen, you should see this, you should see this, um, these pie charts, right? And in these pie charts, these pie charts are, these pie charts are um, from a survey that we did regarding the, um, the testimonies. So you can see starting to the left when we ask people, have the testimonies helped you in your faith and as a believer? Some of you who all are actually watching this, you're probably some of the people that actually responded. And you see that 90% of the people who took the testimony, 90% of the respondents, they said that these testimonies have helped them in their faith as a believer. So I want us to understand that us watching these testimonies is not just just to be watching them, but also getting some type of benefit from them, right? So we go back to that, we go back to that. But then there's a second one. You see here, also when it says, to your right, when it says, have the testimonies help you gain a greater understanding of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And you see that 90% of the people said, 90.2% exactly said, the testimonies have helped them to gain a greater understanding of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And you see another 7.3% said a little, but over 90% of the people who watch these testimonies are saying that they benefit from them. And we added some more information to this as well. In that survey, we asked some people to leave some words, just some feedback, just to express their thoughts, to elaborate on what they were saying or what they stated. And it says here, one person, they said, the testimonies have strengthened me even more in my faith and conviction that no matter what is going on, I'm following the right man and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and that the nation of Islam will live on. Also, many of them have touched on struggles and triumphant in a, in, and a triumphant in a very relatable way, right? So you're seeing here where people are talking about how it is benefiting them. Another way how it's saying how it is benefiting them. Then we get here. This is where somebody talked about in regards to uh, the impact of the testimony. They specifically talked about how it, they shared words on how it helped them with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It says, the testimonies give you, give a more intimate and personal look inside the life of Minister Farrakhan that allows the audience to witness his works beyond when he speaks from the rostrum, 
The testimonies speak deeper of the love he embodies by his acts of kindness, compassion, charitable heart, and countless one-on-one -on -one talks of guidance and wisdom. He gives that otherwise I would not be privy to. So these are some of the, some of the benefits that uh, people uh, have said as it relates to the testimony. And inshallah, then going forward, we might end up posting more of these that have actually the uh, testimonies as well. So when we get here, go to the next one. Now, I had to put this because in the respondents who respond, of course, people have said they want to see more sisters. And I want to see more sisters as well. And I'm just putting this here because we have been asking sisters to participate and be a part of the testimonies because the Nation of Islam is just not a, a male-dominated. It was never set up to be some male-dominated organization. We know that because in our constitution, it talks about the, the rights of the woman in the nation of Islam. And we are taught that a nation can rise no higher than this woman. So if you go to our YouTube page, you can actually see this testimony. You will go to mosque, M-O-S-Q-U-E 46 A-V. And when you go there, you will be able to see this testimony. Here this very powerful testimony by starting from your left. That's the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's daughter, Sister Fatima Muhammad, Fatima Farrakhan. You see the names there. Then you also see uh, Sister Aisha Muhammad, the former uh, national, former sister uh, student captain. Then you see the, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan's, one of his cooks, Sister Mary Alice. And then you see our sister, Sister Ava Muhammad as well. And all of them gave a very powerful testimony. And I really encourage you. This is an old flyer, but I want to encourage you all when you all, when you all have the opportunity to go and actually um, and check this out. Go and actually see and, wa and watch this powerful testimony. It's actually on YouTube, right? So before we get into that, we'll talk about um, this here. And the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is scheduled to, to speak on July the 4th, right? And you know the minister is going to talk about so much other stuff as well. He's going to talk about um, what's going on, the COVID. He's going to talk about what we're seeing, you know? And make sure you tune into this. So check the fly out. One second. So make sure you go and check the, uh, the flyer out and you can go, I mean, you check the flyer, but I meant to say, make sure you go and watch this, uh, this broadcast. It's gonna be online. So you have the opportunity to actually watch it. We're still waiting for our guests to come on. If not, I might have to give my own, my own testimony. So uh, also take the opportunity to follow us on social media at mosque number 46 AV, right? That's on YouTube and then Instagram, mosque underscore 46. So you can stay into contact. You can stay abreast on what we're actually doing here in the city of New Orleans and other plans that we actually have as well. And we get here before we get. So I'll just give these announcements until if our brother signs on. If not, we're just going to shut it down. We have to pick up with our next person on next week. So if you are, you or any of your family members or anybody that's in need of some prayer in relation to this COVID thing that's going on, some people have submitted their information, submit the names of you or your family members so that we can uh, submit their names so that we can have members of our prayer group that can pray them. You don't have to be a Muslim. I hope people don't get caught up in this. Well, I'm a, I ain't a Muslim. I don't, I don't want no Muslims praying for me, uh, you know, to see don't get caught up in that stuff. Don't, don't allow that to stop somebody from praying for you, right? So submit your names. If you want, want, want somebody to, some prayers to be offered up in your, on your behalf at this particular time. And then in addition, we're in the midst of this. You know, we want to pay off our mortgage here in the city of New Orleans. We've been at the building on Diamond and a loss for, since 1994. And we want to pay off our mortgage and we want to pay off our mortgage so that we can begin to start using those funds to begin to place them behind 
ideas that we have as it relates to various um, programs that we want to do, right? And we can use that money that we're giving to the bank every month and put that money behind programs that we can actually use to um, begin to start helping our people. So you can come, you can, you can donate. A second. You can donate and it's a uh, cash app money do dollar sign mosque 46 and you can visit www.noineworleans.com forward slash give that's um that's it so whatever you have to give what we're trying to do we're trying to get 100 163 people to donate a thousand dollars that's an easy way that we can do it but you may not if you you may have that money you may not have the money but whatever it is you can give like the late, not the late, the former president, Barack Obama, one of the things I admired about his, um, his campaign is that they made it in a way where everybody could participate. You just didn't have to be a big donor to be able to give where you could, uh, you can actually, everybody was able to participate. So the same thing here, whatever $5, whatever money you have contribute, you know, until we get our actual goal. And if you don't have any money to spare, you can at least share the flyer we'll put the flyer on our social medias our social media outlets and i'll place it on my page you can at least uh go ahead and do that so coming back to this a reminder on july 4th we're going to hear from the honorable minister lewis farrakhan so please make sure that you are you are on and you're able to uh hear what the honorable minister lewis farrakhan is saying and make sure you share with other people as well and ask them to do it and when you see us with the flyer make sure you share the flyer if you can we would greatly appreciate it now since we are talking about sisters on next inshallah inshallah on next sunday we're going to have our sister sister charlene muhammad she's the former national student mgt captain she's going to be on to give her testimony as well and we're looking forward to that and we thank our sister for her uh signing up and being willing to participate and being willing to be a part of this she is for those people who are watching you may not know well, what's an mgt what is that uh, when we say mgt a muslim girls training in general civilization class you don't have it you don't have it on here but that's what that is and what that means is that when she was in the position she was responsible for the training of the women in the nation of Islam. I don't remember, I don't know at this time, her, uh, the times in which she actually served under that post, but we'll find out and we're gonna be able to have that, inshallah, on next Sunday. So for those people who are asking us, what about the sisters? This is one of the sisters that we have coming up and we're extending the invitation for other sisters who've had the opportunity to, um, meet the honorable minister lewis farrakhan and be in this environment so they can testify and as i said before my reason for doing this is because we want people to be able to understand and know of the minister beyond what this media has uh has done beyond what this media says about the honorable minister lewis farrakhan you know and that's why we're doing these testimonies because in doing these testimonies you get the opportunity to learn about the man, not about this character that the media has actually um, created, you know, which is not the minister. They'll make some people think that the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is just this, um, definitely Brother Eric, inshallah. They'll make some, they'll make people think that the minister is just monster, this hater, someone who doesn't like people because they're Jewish and all that, which is far from the truth. The minister is about truth, right? And the minister gets on black members of, he gets on members of the black community who's not doing right, just the same way that he gets on other members. So these testimonies allow people the opportunity to learn about the man and hear stories and words that he has shared that you don't hear on the media. So this is a part of these testimonies. So for those who are um, coming on, what we're doing right now, we're waiting for our brother to uh actually log on but we'll go back uh remember to spread the word the album minister lewis farrakhan is going to be speaking on july the 4th and see if you can get some of your family members you know see if you can get some of your family members to sit down and watch it and hear what the minister has to say because he hasn't spoken publicly 
since February of this year during our uh, Believers meeting. We talked about them just going back over some of these announcements. We talked about in regards to this to pay off our mortgage, uh, miles number 46. So we would appreciate whatever you have to give, brothers and sisters. And you can at least at least share it, you know, um, send it to some other people. You know, one, one of the beautiful things about social media is that you can share stuff with, you can send stuff to, to, to celebrities. If you feel like you don't have the money, send it to some people on social media that you feel that have the money, right? Okay, our brother is on, family. Let me get back to this. Okay, he is on. Let me get ask to start the video. And we're about to, we're about to get this thing started. Let me go back. So what we, who we have today, for those who are on, we have our brother, he's the Southwest Regional Minister of the Nation of Islam, our brother, brother Abdul Halim Muhammad. We thank him for, for the time, of putting out the time of his schedule to actually be here. I see you, there we go. Here we go, here we, there, man, I, what, I, I thought you got kidnapped or something, man, what happened? <laughs> I did get kidnapped by my wife, as alaykum, brother. Man, I, I I did get kidnapped by my wife. Oh man, yeah, we needed to reschedule it. We can reschedule it now. I know you oh, did no. with your family, man. No, brother, no. no, I, I, you know, brother. First of all, thank you, brother, for your tolerance you and your forbearance. Oh man, hey. and and I apologize to you and and the viewing audience. Um, you know, but as the minister Parkham has taught us, that family is second only to Allah. That's right, and. So I'm, I'm helping my wife, you know, since we've been shut in and sheltering in place, uh, all my honey-do lists have become honey-done lists. Yes, sir. And so I was downstairs just conversing with my wife and then, and then fortunately, Brother Eric called her on her phone. <laughs> and, he, and he was like, you know, like in a panic. I said, what's wrong, brother? He said, Chief, it's two o'clock. You are you coming on? I said, Oh my God. So I ran upstairs and I got on the computer. Hey man. Hey. And again, I, I apologize, brother. Oh, but listen, hey. In, tr I in truth, in truth, I've been tossing and turning about this, uh, brother Willie, mm -hmm. since you asked me to come on. Mm -hmm. I really almost had a sleepless night last night thinking about it. Because you know, uh, you, you you know, you 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 told me kind of the scope of things you wanted to talk about, but yeah, I just really, my mind has been racing, thinking about this man that you and I have been walking with, mm -hmm. for me for as a student minister for thirty three years, is just July first, mm -hmm. and having known him and met him in nineteen April of nineteen seventy six, mm -hmm. and then growing up under his voice in New York uh, as a youth and listening to him on the radio on WWRL 1600 in Harlem um, in New York, growing up in New York, not really knowing who he was because my godfather loved him. He said, this, this, this Farrakhan, my man, Minister yeah. Farrakhan, I said, Farrakhan, okay. And it's, those are the seeds that were planted. Wow. So anyway, I, let me slow <laughs> my roll and then come come where you, you're the host and, <laughs> I'm, I'm the interviewee. We're going we're gonna to get to those questions. So you kind of, you you know, I, I didn't know until like I think the first time we did a testimony that you are not originally from Houston. You're actually from New York. So can you briefly share with the audience that are, that, that, that are watching your history prior to the Nation of Islam? Okay. You know, on this Father's Day, again, I was reflecting, brother, on this Father's Day you know, growing up without a father. Mm. I was born in upstate New York and suffered in New York. And my parents divorced at a very young age when I was an infant. And my earliest recollection was being living uh, on Intervale Avenue in the South Bronx across the street from PS 90, 99. And then um, moving to uh, Edgecombe Avenue, uh, which is, uh, uh, called the Washington Heights, which mm -hmm. sits over Harlem. During the Battle of Harlem, during the Revolutionary War, George Washington established his headquarters there. That's why they called it Washington Heights. Mm 
Mm -hmm. But all of my family lived in Harlem. So my grandmother lived in Harlem. So I grew up there, uh, went to school uh, all the way through the ninth grade. And then I started getting in trouble. And so my mother moved me to South Jersey to a little town called Whitesboro, New Jersey, mm -hmm. named after the last re post-reconstruction congressman from Wilmington, North Carolina, named George White. Mm -hmm. He, uh, after he left Congress, he went into land development and he bought a parcel of land in Southern Jersey and they named the town after him. Finished high school there in 74, went to uh, went to, Virgi uh, to Virginia to college, the Hampton Institute. I graduated from Hampton Institute. People be having these arguments at Hampton University. Okay. Anthony, you know, H how, 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 who's the real HU? I went to HI, so I, I just saw all that. I said, hey, ain't it. My son went to HU, my son, so that he could have that argument. But the school I went to and what we did in school, uh, beyond perfectly honest with you, brother, the stuff we, the capers we pulled in school, brother, is uh, a felony in 50 states and four oh, U.S. Geez. territories nowadays. Yeah. But anyway, so we were blessed uh, uh, to finish school in four years. Uh, and then I went back to New Jersey uh, for two years, worked in uh, in finance and, bit, and banking. And then uh, my then uh, college girlfriend or, or fiance at that point said, look, I turned down a job uh, in Houston, Texas, uh, to, to be close to you on the East Coast. He wow. said, but they, they, Houston is booming. We need to go there. So she sent me these, the one ads from the Houston Post and the Houston Chronicle. The one ads from the Houston Post and Houston Chronicle were thicker than the Sunday New York Times with all of its advertisement, just the one ads alone. Wow. I said, well, and that, you know, I, I, so I, I got on there and I went south uh, to uh, New Jersey. But at that time, between that time, I had been estranged from my then uh, girlfriend, fiance, and I fathered uh, uh, brother Robert, Robert Jr., mm -hmm. uh, with his mother, Florine. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I moved, I moved to, uh, to, to Texas uh, and uh, at that point, then we, we wound up getting married in 81. And then my other son, my second son, Mikal, was born in 83. And uh, then, you know, I was doing the things that uh, college grads do in a boom town, you know, partying. Uh, you know, some things I, I never went, I had a brush with Islam in college. I joined, actually joined the mosque in, two, in the summer of, of 1975 um, and in Temple Number 10 under uh, then Donald Shabazz, Izzedine Shabazz. Mm. And my mentor was Brother James Muhammad. He passed away, Minister James Muhammad. Mm. We went all through South Jersey that summer uh, selling the Muhammad Speaks newspaper. At that time, it didn't turn into Balian News at that point. It was Muhammad mm. Speaks. He loved the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. We set up all night there were some brothers that were out of Philadelphia, uh, Brother Hiram, uh, Brother Jeffrey, and I forget there was a third brother, I, I forget his name, but these were five percenters. <laughs> they were former five percenters who were in the Philly temple, but they helped come to Southern Jersey to establish Bridgeton, New Jersey, Bridgeton, New Jersey, out uh, study group or temple. Mm. And so we sit up all night, man, drinking black coffee, and they would be ciphering on the lessons and whatnot, man, and listen to Farrell Saunders, a jazz great Farrell Saunders. So fast forward, went back to college that sophomore year, 1976, and then I, I met Minister Farrakhan. Well, let me let me back up. Let me back. 1975, the summer of 75 was the uh uh, then Supreme Minister Wallace D. Muhammad came to Madison Square Garden, his first appearance in New York, and they literally shut down the whole city from the airport all the way to Madison Square Garden for him. That's how strong the Muslims were. Mm. And uh, that was the last time uh, Minister Farrakhan, after that, Minister Farrakhan got taken out of New York. I went, I went back to school. I lost track of him. And then in April of 1976, I was on student government, and they brought Minister Farrakhan to Hampton, 
And I was only Muslim on student government, so I was his escort. I was his security. He stepped off the plane with nobody with him. And I literally freaked out. And he said to me, brother, calm down. Relax, brother. I was like, he said, relax, he said, relax brother. I said, yes, sir. I remember us going to a, a restaurant. You know, it was good college students. They didn't get a chance to get something to eat. So when a guest came to town, we, we got to take him out to eat. So I ate everything on the menu. Uh, they took her to a Chinese restaurant. And I remember Mr. Par, he was just so humble, man. It was just, it was amazing. Cause I was expecting that fiery Farrakhan that I knew, man. And he was just so humble and so kind. And I remember ordering, I'll never forget, Mugu Guy Pad. And he said, brother, you know how to pronounce that, huh? I said, yes, sir, brother minister, sure do. I know how to pronounce it and eat it. <laughs> we, we we used to have mystery meat, you know, and the and the lady in the in the in the serving lounge said, "You want gravy, baby? Uh, you put something on it. <laughs> that, that meat is green. <laughs> so put put something on it." So he spent two days on Hampton's campus, brother, and it was a brother named um, Michael Smoot. He was out of Chicago, and he had a violin. And Minister Farrakhan was uh, was with the students uh, before he gave the speech, just answering questions and meeting with us. Brother walked in. He said, brother, what you got this? The violin. He said, let me see that. Man, I didn't know Mr. Farrakhan played the violin. Brother, he took it, start playing some, he started playing some Beethoven. Wow. I'm like, wow. He gave the speech that night. He must have talked. I, I did the welcome. The student government president, Tim Austin, did the introduction. But I was on program for the welcome. And then um, after that, we walked down to student union. He answered questions for another hour and a half. Wow. Now, the last time I saw him uh, before that summer of 75 in New York, or 76 in New York, at, in fact, at the Apollo Theater, he, um, he was trying to get a plane, a plane out of Hampton, Virginia, into Landover, Maryland, or into DC because he wanted to go to the Jimmy Young Muhammad Ali fight. Mm. And he just couldn't catch a flight. And he just, he, he, everything he tried just wouldn't work. And I remember him telling me as much as he loved the fight game, he said, I don't like that crowd that's around Ali though. Mm. I remember him saying that to me. And then he said, I wonder why Allah doesn't want me to be there. Mm. And anybody that reviewed that fight, it wasn't a very good fight. Ali was not in shape and Jimmy Young didn't a lot of people thought that Ali had lost. Mm. So anyway, fast forward that summer, the Urban League had a program at the Apollo Theater and Mr. Farrakhan was the keynote speaker and I happened to be in New York. And he spoke and I listened and then I, I was outside Wait, He walked out the front door, out the front of the Apollo and I saw him and he remembered me. And that, that touched me because I said, all the people Mr. Farrakhan know, he remembered me. He remembered my name and everything. Oh, my brother from Hampton. How you doing, brother? And I just that just warmed my heart and, and endeared me to him even more. So <clears throat> again, I go back to college, uh, after finishing college, back to Jersey, back to, to then to Texas, and uh, got married. And then in 84, I'm watching television. And all of a sudden, I see on the CBS Morning News, I see Minister Farrakhan, Brother Mustafa, <clears throat> Brother Salim, may Allah forever be pleased with him, oh, oh ah, standing with the minister with close cuts, bow ties. I, I said, whoa, whoa, wait, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And the man, never forget the man Bill Curtis said, and the Reverend Jesse Lewis Jackson is running for the nomination of the president of the Democratic Party. And people would take him seriously, except for this man, Black mm. Muslim leader, Louis Farrakhan. I said, whoa. Wow. And the minister was saying, you know, Brother Jesse is like a man. He's like Joseph. He has a coat of many colors. Come and support him, brothers and sisters. Let's get behind the candidacy of our brother. And I said, whoa. Well, by that time, man, I was smoking a pack of Newports a day. I never went back to eating pork, though. I was drinking me a quart of Kahlua a week and smoking that and smoking it some yeah yeah some red bud sesame because I didn't like stuff that popped on the clothes and burned your clothes. So I, <laughs> I was smoking an ounce of literally an ounce of that a week. 
at the rate I was going, I'd been dead in about five years. So I got involved with the Jesse Jackson campaign. And ironically, my mentors, my political mentors in the city was a city councilman by the name of Ernest McGowan and his wife, Jewel McGowan. Mm. Ernest McGowan was the city councilman of District B and his wife, Jewel McGowan. Now, Ernest McGowan was a Methodist minister and worked in the post office before he became a city councilman. Mm. And he was Brother Collins' mentor. They sent him down to college there in New Orleans, brother, expecting him to come out and be a Methodist minister. This, wow, this, is, this, is, this is ironic, brother. So wow. he was out of Fifth Ward. He was out of Fifth Ward. He was college mentor. Wow. So they were my political mentors. They taught me the ropes. And I worked my way all the way through from, from the caucus level, all the way up to Senatorial District 13, and, had I been, and all the way up to the Texas State Convention. And had I been better known as I am today, they probably would have sent me to, to San Francisco that year to the political convention. Mm. Uh, I had no intentions of rejoining the mosque, brother. I was just wanted to help Jesse Jackson because Mr. Farrakhan said help him. So that being said, though, but that's when I ran into the brothers of Mosque 45 who had set up an unauthorized cable. And they were selling bean pies, tapes, books, Final Call newspapers, they had no no authorization until they got shut down. But that time it was too late. I loaded up and I ran into the brothers. And <clears throat> there were many uh, people who at that time, again, remember the controversy began raging about Minister Farrakhan uh, and the Jews, that, that thing started heating up. And I found myself, even with a cigarette in my mouth, defending Minister Farrakhan. And those brothers were wondering, man, how does brother know all this stuff? They didn't know that I had a, I had a brush, I, I call it a brush with Islam. The Nation of Islam was no more, but the remnants of it, I got enough of it and enough of the teachings and enough indoctrination that I knew what he was saying out of uh, 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 Muslim lesson number one, question and answer number, lost found Muslim lesson number one, question and answer number five. Why do we take Jerusalem from the devil? How long ago? And when he said, you know, they use, he's using, He's using the name of God when he when he was accused of calling Judaism the God of religion. They said they use his name, Christianity, they use his name to shield their dirty religion. I know what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. So I'm there defending him, fighting with the white people and whatnot. And the brothers are looking at me like, who is this cat, man? I got a new port in my mouth blowing smoke in their face. Yo, man, let me tell you something about Farcon. Y'all don't know nothing about Farcon. And I was and he was saying that. So because I went to the Democratic Convention, I worked in the bank. I was a new accounts uh, super representative. And they gave me vacation time off, brother. This is, this is how, how a lot worked. They gave me time off. And what happened was that then the day of the convention, when I was go down there and represent uh, my, my senatorial district, they called me, told me, you need to come into work. I said, you gave me vacation time. I can't come into work. People are depending on me. There's no, I don't have no alternates to what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So I said, okay, well, we'll see you Monday when you come into work. I said, all right. I said, I ain't coming in. So I came into work on Monday and they had a stack of new account cards on my desk. And they said, well, go clear those cards up. And I said, nah, tell me what you're going to do. Don't have me work all day and then fire me at three o'clock. Y'all must think I'm stupid. So <laughs> they fired me. <laughs> they fired me, brother. And because they fired me, I couldn't get unemployment. I had a new baby, of course, uh, my son, Mikael. I just got married. We had a new car. We had a condominium, man. I was living the Negro, middle-class, bourgeoisie life. But Allah broke me all the way down, brother. I was so I was so depressed, man. I contemplated super suicide, but I knew that I wouldn't, I could, if I killed myself, I, I couldn't get the life insurance, that policy that I had. Wow. So I scrapped that idea. And uh, because we were desperate for money, um, or I was desperate for money as a man trying to be the maintainer of my family. But the thing that kept me alive, brother, was the fact that the study group or the mosque at that time, which had been broken down from a, from a, a, a mosque or a temple down to a study group under Brother Jabril after the tragic uh, death of Minister Raymond, the former minister prior to 75 here, was that they had a radio broadcast on KYOK and KCOH. And I used to listen to that broadcast. I used to tape that broadcast. 
and listen to that cassette over and over again while I was driving around all week list, trying to find work. It was Minister Farrakhan's voice that kept me alive, kept me sane wow. again. So in fact, there was a brother named Carlos Muhammad, and I got to put him on the record because he's the one that fished me in the nation. So any good that I did, I give all praises due to Allah, but the instrument they used was a brother named Carlos Muhammad. He, brought, he called me up and invited me to the CUNY Homes. Now, the CUNY Homes, of course, is where George Floyd grew up. Wow. Third world. Again, I'm, I'm just giving you all these nexuses. Where he grew up, and he invited me to a meeting, Mr. Farrakhan had just returned from Libya. And he invited me to a meeting to come out and hear the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, which I did. And uh, I joined. I joined right away. Thanks. And uh, I, I knew that they searched. Minister Farrakhan said he put his, his reefer in his hat, man. I left mine in, I left mine in my visor of my car because I knew they searched. And on the way home, I smoked that last doobie. And that was the last time I, I smoked. <laughs> but I did join, uh, and then and then came from there. And uh, it was uh, Brother Carlos and Brother Willie out of Shreveport, who may Allah be pleased with him. He, Brother Carlos, they nurtured me. They nursed me into uh, the mosque. And Brother Charles X White, wow. they nursed me back into the nation of Islam, brother. Wow. And uh, those three years, we were like vagabonds, man. Eventually, they opened a police substation next to the place where we met in the CUNY homes. So we left from there. And uh, we were like vagabonds, man. We met everywhere. We met in apartments. We met at the YMCA. We met at T Texas Southern. We met at the YWCA. We met at Shake Community Center. I mean, we met, I mean, everywhere, hotel, uh, ballrooms. We. We were, we were just nomads in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we, we got a place on Brandon Street. I think it's 8431 Brandon Street in the sunny side section of Houston. And uh, then the minister came to Houston in June 30th, 1987. And he came to set the mosque up. What happened was is that... Uh, he asked us to write him, all of us to write him about what was going on in the city of Houston. So we did, he read those letters. And you know you know how we, we say in English lesson C1, he, he came to North America by himself. Minister Farrakhan came to Houston, Texas by himself. Man. He got off a plane. He had on a white walking suit like I got on, white patent leather shoes with a briefcase and his travel bag. Now they left me at the hotel, man. They, they, they. I don't know why they didn't think I knew anything about security, but they left me in the room to secure his, his suite. Okay, so I was there. He walks through the door, and and he sees me. He says, "Oh, my brother! That I remember your nineteen-year-old firebrand from Hampton." As soon as he walked through the door, <laughs> everybody was like shocked, like. Whoa, you know him? Yeah. So we met that night with the laborers and Brother Khalil. I was Robert X, but Khalil, no, I was Robert 2X. Brother Khalil was Robert X. And the minister said, I come to set the, the mosque up. We're going to pick laborers tonight. And, and, and Brother Khalil, asked, at that time, Brother Robert asked the, the minister, well, what is the qualities of a minister? And he began running it down. And he, Brother Khalil pointed to me and said, he should be our minister. He said, well, no, brother, I, I'm going to let the believers choose them, which wow. he did. But in between that, in between that, brother Khalil, like a campaign manager, I didn't ask him to, but he, he knew the way we soldiered over three years together. He knew there was something about me. And as my, as, as brother, he went and he, and he, he, he lobbied. And the election was held that night. I was chosen the minister. He was chosen a captain as a secretary. And Gloria X. Concepcion, may Allah forever be pleased with her, she, she returned to Allah, was my then chosen as sister captain. So that basically, and, that and I became the, the student minister here July 1st, 1987. Wow. 
Uh-huh. And I've been that ever since. And then I became the Southwest Regional Student Minister officially April 1st, 1994. You, you, must, can, you must can read mine because you, you ran through my first four questions and <laughs> based upon that first question. So and you, you came right to this, this point uh, is the next part. So how did you become the regional minister? And I'm going to make it a two-part question. And what advice has the Honorable Mr. Louis Farrakhan given you regarding that particular responsibility, that post? Well, first thing first, uh, Brother Carl established the Southwest region. And I forever thank Allah for that brother's work. Uh, he's very, very methodical. Uh, he's an engineer by training. And that's how he operates. And he put this thing together, this, this region, the Southwest region together. And I thank a lot for him. But he was sat down. I don't, I still to this day don't really understand the total nature of the dispute that was going on. But he was sat down and I was interim. They just asked me to kind of come up to Dallas and, 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 and take over things, work with the regional staff then, work with them. And then, if, then in April of 94, Minister Farrakhan transferred the region to Houston, which is the biggest city. It's the biggest city in the Southwest. Now, the advice he gave me was, he said, brother, don't go around building the region and let Houston go to hell. Mm. So that was the advice that he gave me, brother. And you know in how I basically, how I handle you and the, and some of the brothers that are on the line right now listening and watching, mm-hmm. you know that uh, the way I, I do is like, you got the teachings just like I do. Or I have, I have administrative authority, but you are as intelligent and everyone that accepts these te- teachings are as intelligent as anybody else. And I have to, lean on the side of how he's handled me and how he handled me is when I was a minister. I, again, these things now they start, they come to me from these table talks. I, I, I thought I was going to need all my table talks here, all them napkins <laughs> and whatnot I wrote on brother. That's, all those know, pieces of, all wow, those pieces wow, of wow, paper, wow. all them table talks. You, wow. you know what I'm talking about, brother, Willie, right? Yeah. You do it on your phone. I, I need a pen and paper, but I got, <laughs> I got all of these, all of these scrap notes, I'm glad that uh, that they 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 actually recorded because I know I don't got it verbatim, but I got all kind of table talks. Wow. One of the table talks was when I was uh, when I was uh, uh, just not the regional minister, but uh, you know a lot of people were very angry that Brother Khalil Robert X at that time had went out and lobbied people so that when the vote was taken then, you know, I was on the slate and he was on the slate. So they were right, the minister. In fact, they walked away. I mean, half the mosque walked away. Wow. He asked them in the meeting. I got the tape. He asked them in the meeting. He says, just because your man that you nominated didn't become the minister, will you say, oh, and walk away? No, sir, but mister. No sooner than he got on the plane, <laughs> joke is back up. <laughs> it was something. It was something, brother. But they wrote him. So I'm sitting at the table, man. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know how, you know, this man, brother, he is, he's like a, a radio. You know, he picks up frequencies, brother. He'll tune in on you. I'm not being spooky. But he'll read you. And then he said to me, he looked at me, he said, brother, you know, they, I'm, I'm sitting down the table from him. You know where brother Ishmael usually sits on the right-hand side of him? Yes. At, at, at the table, well, maybe about two or three seats down from there. He points at me and said, brother, you know, they write they write letters about me down there, uh, uh, about you down there, about you, brother. He said, but brother, brother Farrakhan's not down there holding your hand. He said, whatever you're accomplishing is by the will of Allah. Mm. He said, brother, don't worry about them hypocrites. He said, you just keep on doing the work. Wow. 
because I, I was scared. I was at the table, man. I'm telling you, man. I was like, man, like the Wizard of Oz. I was a scarecrow, the Cowardly Lion, and the Tin Man, and Dorothy all wrapped up in one. But he he read me, and he said that, yeah. He said, don't pay no attention. I'm here for Chris down there, brother. He said, you do the work. And my relationship with Minister Farrakhan, I wish I could say like many of the student ministers and laborers and others that, you know, I talk with him all the time, I'm this, that, and the other. I don't. He has always handled me in a certain way, and that's why I handle you and others in a certain kind of way, is look, you know the teachings. You got a field to work out of. Go work that field. If you need, you're going to do something that's going to, that's going, is outside, or you feel of your authority. If you have a doubt, call me so that I may give you what I know. And therefore, if something happens, you know, they'll call me and I'll say, yeah, I proved it or I didn't approve it. That's all I've asked you all. And that, that's how he's handled me in these 33 years. But I have, I have, I am now, you know, so laser focused on his departure, you know? And I'm fast forward to, I don't know, I'm fast forwarding a lot, but I'm running this tape back and forth, man, in my mind. 10, 10, uh, 11, 15, 10, 10, 15, 10, 11, 15 was the next day. We're in his suite. I don't know if you were there, brother. No, sir. No, but, sir. but we were in his suite. And he just finished speaking to a whole bunch of people uh, right after that, talking in a sense about a black agenda. Came upstairs to his suite. It was in his suite. And I'm sitting kind of right in front of him and all those student ministers behind me. And he asked a question of us. He said, he, he, he basically prefaced with a state, statement. He said, you know, I hope you don't think that what happened out there that we did that. He said, that was Allah that did that. Then he asked a question of us. What did you see and what did you hear? And I raised my hand just like that. And he looked at me and he kind of chuckled. But he said, yes, Peter. Now, everybody kind of laughed, I guess, because Peter was a kind of a, a kind of a, a impulsive brother. I don't think I cuss as much as Peter did, but but that that struck me wow. because Peter denied him. He was his chief disciple and he denied him. I'm not saying I'm the chief disciple, but I am the longest serving regional minister in the nation right now. But he said to he said to him, I, I, I just couldn't get it out of my head. Pe the thing that, that always sticks in my head is Peter denied Jesus. So I was anxious to come on here and witness to make sure that this is on record. That if I lost my damn mind and said, I don't know him, you could play this tape a thousand times. So look at this, <laughs> look at this fool. No, brother, I can't deny him. I won't deny him. And I don't know how that denial you know, will take place. It could be, it couldn't, it may not be as we think somebody come up and put a microphone in your face, a gun to your head and say, you with Farrakhan, you, uh, no, I, I don't know him. It could be in other kind of ways that we do. You know, it could be a spiritual denial. It could be some kind of other kind of denial. So we have to guard against mm. the, the, the whisperings of a slinking devil who whispers into the hearts of men from among the jinn and the men. We have to be careful about the internal thoughts pushing the minister around in our minds because something didn't go the way that we thought it should go. Or he seemed to move too slow on something that we thought should happen. Or he didn't respond as quickly to a question or request as we thought, you know? Or maybe he decided something and you thought you had it all figured out and he decided, uh, no, hold on with that, brother. Don't do that, brother. See, so and sometimes, brother, you you gotta take you gotta take one for the team. I'll give you an example. During Hurricane Katrina, I I was he allowed me to go on the Bill O'Reilly show, 
right? Bill O'Reilly, the O'Reilly factor. Because yeah, yeah. it was about Hurricane Katrina and what was happening between Hurricane Katrina survivors and the school children here in Houston. It was clashes. That's that's in that that is in my region, in my city, and right there in my lane. So I did it there and I I wish I can't find that tape. I wish I could find that tape. I laughed at Bill O'Reilly at the end, man. I laughed at him. I told him, man, you, <laughs> you think this is some, you think them children are fighting. Wait till you see how y'all fight over the Congress. I, I said something like that and sure enough, <laughs> it was crazy. But anyway, so, so, so then because I was on the O'Reilly factor on Fox, Joe Scarborough had a show, he got Morning Joe now, but he had a show called Scarborough Country. His producers called me and said to me, Joe Scarborough wants you to come on his show. I said, okay, well, I got to get it approved. I got to run it up the food chain up to Chicago and, and I'll let you know. I said, but if, and I gave him all my information. I said, I'll let you know. So the minister sent me back a message. I was ready to, I was ready to rock and roll. The minister sent me back a message and said, no, brother, if they want to interview, if they want to ask you questions, about, if you remember Mayor Nagin and there were some officials there in Dallas, met the minister in Dallas when that delegation came down to hold a town hall meeting about Hurricane Katrina? Yes. I don't know if you remember that? Yes. They held it in Houston, but he flew in on a private plane with a bunch of uh, our black scholars. I remember. And, but anyway, he met them in the hangar in Dallas and it was there that Mayor Nagin and others had said that they heard rumors that the levee had been exploded. Minister didn't say that. He was told that. And then he advocated that that be investigated. So they said that Farrakhan said that the levee got blown up. See, th these are some lying, wicked demons, like Brother Ishmael said that they, they're satanic, man. So Scarborough wanted to get me on the show, and he had this, 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 <laughs> I almost said something. This black, this black man, um, I forget his name. Out, he's out of Los Angeles, but he is just a, a he's just, what is his name? I, I can't remember. We'll, we'll pull but, it up. But he had, he had this cat. It was an ambush. He wanted to bring this, this guy on, this guy, this black guy on. I, I call him black sock puppet. That's going to say what Scarborough wanted to say. But he'd be afraid of being accused of call, being called a racist. So you use these black sock puppets to attack the minister, to attack Reverend Shopton, to attack Reverend Jackson, right? So that you can then uh, you can then uh, uh, sit back like, well, I didn't say it. He said it. I forget his name, but he 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 he's a real man. He just is silly, man. But he's a re, he's a Reverend something, Reverend. Uh, but anyway, it was an ambush. So the minister told me, no, you can't go. And if they want to talk to me, have them call me, brother. I said, yes, sir, mm -hmm. my minister. So Scarborough said, well, the representative of the Nation of Islam was coming on. And he said my name. He said, but he was a coward. And he didn't come on there. It wasn't that I was a coward. I'm a soldier. And my minister kept me from being on national TV arguing with somebody that was a fool so he could have me going back and forth arguing, just like um, there's a video of uh, Candace Owens and and Dr. Yeah. Uh, Michael uh, Michael Eric Dyson. Yes. It's just yes. a it's a and and and, and then the the, the, uh, the guy uh, 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 Berman is just sitting in between. Well, I, I I'm like you know what that could have been me because I I I wouldn't want to let this man say that Mr. Farcon is this that and the other and not and not go after him, but. I would have went after Joe Scarborough. I said, he's saying, he's saying, I'm not gonna argue with him, he's a fool. I said, Mr. Scarborough, you're the one who really thinks that, but now you got this sock puppet here, you got your hand up his back, he's mouthing what you believe, but you ain't man enough to say it. See, it would have devolved. And I don't wanna ever be in a position where I am not representative of a nation. I'm, I'm, you know, we're representative, we're being groomed for positions, we're qualifying ourselves for positions that await us. 
Minister means servant. So we, you and I may be serving in any capacity in the future. We yeah. may not be this. We're going to be some kind of other kind of servant, some kind of ministerial position, brother. Preaching may not be it. It may be something else. So, so, so I never, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. You may close out on that point. I, I just so I, I just always want to never be, um, how can I say, it's not diplomatic, but I just never want to be in a position where I'm not reflecting the best possible representation of the man who's the best representative of the Christ, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And you've covered, you've covered, you've covered, you've covered a lot. And you shared a lot also about the Alvin Lewis Barkai. And it's, it's beautiful that you have all of those notes. And I can, you know, we, when we would go to Detroit and we're in our, uh, our, like our own museum, I can see those things being there, you know. So yes. as we talk about the minister, as I talked to you before this, I just want to bring up some questions so you can just share what you have observed as it relates to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Like, what can you share with the viewing and listening audience about how the minister understands people's personal journey to become the best of themselves? The minister said, I heard him on, say on a lecture, and I, I wish I was like uh, student minister Abdul Haq out of Newark, and I sure miss brother Abdul Hafiz because he he was like my memory bank. I mean, he was like my computer. I, Hafiz, do you remember so and so and so? Yes, my brother. And he would he run it down. Who was there? What happened? What were the circumstances? What was the context? I, I still weep to this day about my brother returning to Allah. I don't I don't grieve, but I, but in my heart. Every time I think about him, I see a picture of him, brother. I, I just I just remember the times I had with him and and how he would be like, I would ask him a question he would be able to say. But the minister was was one lecture I was listening to, and the minister said, even when he goes into the jungles of Africa or up in the Am uh, in the Amazon, the jungles of South America the ghetto or wherever he is, he said he has never met, listen to these words, he never met a human being that he didn't see some aspect of God in them that was greater than him. Wow. Repeat that? So he said that no matter whether he was in, I'm paraphrasing now, whether he was in the, the jungles of Africa or the jungles of Central South America or the ghettos, wherever is, he's never met a human being that he did not see some aspect of God that was greater than him. In other words, he said to us in Detroit at dinner one day, he said, blessed are a pure heart, for they shall see God. And then he added, in everything. He says, I see God in everything. They're saying that they hear an uh, echo. Do you hear an echo, brother? Uh, no, let me see. I just hear my voice, but go ahead. We got it. Okay. Yeah. Well, let me, I'll put in the thing so that they don't hear an echo. Yeah. You, you can hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I hear you. Okay. Yeah, that's, so, that's what's going on. Okay. So he said he see he sees God in everything, including the workings of Satan. Because wow. Satan's working for God. In the end, he's working for God. Remember now, in, in the Holy Quran, what is the, the devil's gonna do? He's gonna deny you in me. He said, I have no authority over you, so if I called and you and you obey, mm. I deny you associate me with Allah. So he, he even he's going he's gonna sell you out. So Satan works for God. And then the minister has the, the spiritual and intellectual courage to ask, where did Satan come from? Mm. 
if Allah is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything, and Satan exists, then who, who made Satan? Who created Satan? See, that's a deep theological question, brother. But the minister, the kind of man that has, has the ability to ask it, but then again, look at the question that you asked me. I'm giving you that answer. The answer is, is that he looks for God wherever he sees it. He's looking for God everywhere. And that's how he sees it in us. And he, and he lives the lessons. You know, why isn't the devil settled on the best part of the planet Earth? Why did we let half original man Columbus discover the poor part of the planet Earth? Well, if we knew every square inch of it, we'd have God known and knew every square inch of it and didn't care anything about the poor part. Then God don't care nothing about the poor part. He's looking at the best part that he preserved for himself ever since he made it. So a man that has a job like Minister Farrakhan, a man that has a mission like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, is looking for help. And he doesn't look to the sky. He's looking to Allah and for Allah to send him an answer in a human being. Mm. So he's looking for God. Right. Wow. That's, that, 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 that's powerful, man, that the minister said, even when he, like, going to the, like, these areas where people are viewed as being primitive, that he still looks for God, right? And so the other question of it is, what can you share about what you've seen or experienced about how the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan encourages people? I've seen him encourage children, elders, those who are sick, those who are going through, I mean, things in life where it appears like they've mistaken the chastisement of men to be the punishment of God, the, the persecution of men to be the chastisement of Allah. And he helps them to discern between the two. And he helps them to be able to know the difference between what is the same, what is similar, and what is opposite. Mm. His ability, brother, to help you sort that out is how he helps people to see the best of themselves. Mm -hmm. And most of us, after we meet him and be with him, we're on cloud nine. How many times have we been with the minister, bro, Willie, and someone will come up and shake his hand and say, I'm so pleased to meet you. And the minister will say to him, either in the airport or the hotel or in the suite, Oh, I'm more honored to meet you. That's right. As a You're fan. honored to meet me? Yes. Right. One time I asked him a question. I don't know. It was after that. It was the, the after the we had coffee with the minister that morning after that believers meeting where he, he definitely definitively made sure that everybody understand there's no successor to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He's the eternal leader. And he also dealt with our relationship with the church. Of Scientology. You remember that believers meeting? Yes. Well, I was there sitting next to Abdul Malik, sitting next to Brother Tony, and we had coffee with him that morning. And, and the stuff he was saying, brother, about us that were around that table, you know, sometimes, brother, you don't even believe, you, you, you think that you are hardcore Muslim who are proud to be black and proud to be one of the beloveds of Allah, man. But you and I sometimes, brother, we're victims of a world that one has two, two curses to it. The curse and the mythology of white supremacy and the curse and the mythology of black inferiority. And we don't know how deeply subconscious that is, that people have told us we can't, we're not this, we're not that. And I'm not talking about the kind of confidence that comes up with this arrogance or false bravado, but we really sometimes lack good self, uh, proper self-esteem. So when a man of God tells you all these beautiful things about yourself, sometimes, brother, we literally go about the business of trying to prove him wrong by doing stuff that's completely opposite of what he told us. 
But in this particular instance, wow. he was telling me some stuff about myself and all those around the table. And I just sat there and I said, Brother Minister, knowing that he could see through me, brother, hell, there ain't no need of me trying to, you know, like this movie called Village of the Damned. These, these, these children, these alien children could read people's minds and cause them to drive their cars off the cliff and shoot other people and all that. And his teacher knew who they were. So he, he put a bomb in a book bag, but he was thinking about, he would think about a brick wall so that they couldn't read his mind and know that this bomb, this time bomb was <laughs> Sometimes we're so stupid, man. We be trying to think about all kind of stuff, hoping he's not reading our mind, man. But in this time, man, I'm like an open book. So I'm sitting right down the table from him at coffee. And I said, Brother Minister, why do you keep me around? And these wow. were his words. And these were his words. He said, Brother, how can I love God who I've never seen and not love the God that's sitting right in front of me? Mm. So mm. if every time I see a black man, I'm looking at God, man, we need to take the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at his word. Mm. And Minister Farrakhan has demonstrated it. And if we would do that same thing, which is the master's last commandment to his disciples, love ye one another, even as I have loved you. What would make the minister so happy if we looked out for each other, like he's looked out for us? If we would be as forgiving and forbearing of him, of, of each other, as he has been of us. As he said many times in many a labor meeting, Brother, Brother Willie, he said to us, Brother, minister, Brother Student Minister, I could have got rid of all of you at any time. That's right. That's right. And it's interesting, this is a latter question, but I'll bring it now, that you use the word forbearing because that's actually the, one of the meanings of the holy name that he gave you. What connection do you see in that? Well, you remember you were at dinner I think it was 2005, 2006, when the Essence Festival came to Houston and he spoke. Right. And we were at dinner. And he, he asked me why I was studying for my PhD. I had got my master's and he why I wanted to get my PhD. And I, I told him out of the book of Isaiah, I wanted to help rebuild the wasted places and, and, and rebuild the wasted cities. And then he said, oh, okay, brother. He said, when you get your PhD, he said, what he said, he said, I got a name in mind for you. You remember that? I remember that. Uh-huh. And so eventually I got the PhD and I visited with him. Um, it was, in fact, I got the notes right here. <laughs> <laughs> I visited with him. I had a one-on-one -on -one with the minister, man a whole hour with the minister in the basement of the palace, just me and him, on the 29th anniversary of me being minister, which was July 1st, 2016. Look at that. And he told me to write him and remind him, I reminded him that he promised me a name and to write him about a name and my financial condition. Mm. I did both. So again, we come to uh, we come to a laborers meeting. It was a year later now. We come to a laborers meeting at the Salam restaurant. And I don't know if you've seen that picture of him talking to me. We're very close to one another. And then there's another picture with him hugging me around my neck. Hmm. It was, that was in between, Savior's Day had taken place in between that. And he had told Brother Hillary at that time, he said, Brother Hillary said, you know, Brother Minister, you know, that British accent. That, this name, Hillary, I don't want to have the same name as that woman. Something to that effect. <laughs> Mr. So I got a name in mind for you, brother. And I laughed. He said, I'll give you a name. So we at this labor's at the Salam, I think it was July the 7th of 2017. And so I, he greeted all of the student labor, certain student labor student line, he greeted and he's talking to me. And I said, and I'm not thinking about myself, brother. I'm thinking about my brother. I said, Brother Minister, I just want to remind you, you know, you, you said you won't give Brother Hillary a name, and you said you had a name for me. He said, yes, Brother. Tell Brother Hillary his name is now Brother Abdul Hakim. I said, okay, wow. brother, you know, like that. So he'll tell you to this day how that, that whole thing went down. 
He said, and brother, if you come back to the believers meeting that following Wednesday, I remember that. He said, he said, I will give you your name. Now, if you ever could review that tape, there was a certain point in time where he was, he brought up the E team, he brought up the regional laborers, he brought up the national laborers, and we were all standing on stage. And he was pointing at Brother Hakeem and he said, and this is Abdul Halim. And then somebody mm. whispered to him, he said, Hakeem. So yeah, Abdul Hakeem. And so he said he was going to give me my nation, my name in front of the whole nation. That's what he said. But he didn't. He closed out. I still don't like him. He so I, I, normally, you know, brother, if you know anything about me, you know how I am. I'll stick around afterwards, especially if he gives a speech on, on Sunday, to find out which one of the student ministers I can get, make sure get to the palace for dinner. You know, as a regional minister, that's what I'm going to do. And Brother Ishmael usually tags me to do that. He said, he said, Halim, tell, yeah, tell the minister to stick around. I'm going to, we're going to read the list. I said, okay, brother. So, but this time, brother, I said, you know something? I need to go back to the office. I normally don't do that. <laughs> but this time, <laughs> Gotta get it. It's like, a mystery, God. You have to, look, brother, it's the thing about, and the minister taught this, if you remember him talking about him, Malcolm telling him he was going to Boston to be the minister. And the messenger said, no, put him under authority first. So he wound up being the captain. So he had to readjust his mind. Well, sometimes, brother, that's what I mean about the minister and not pushing him around in our mind and ever thinking crazy. But I had to go and say, so I went to him and I got back it off. I said, brother minister, did, a, did Allah not inspire you to give me a name? He said, oh, brother, I've been thinking about that for a while. I'm going to give you my name. Oof. He said, you've been with me. He said, you've been with me a long time, brother, and you've wow. been through a lot. He said, I'm wow. going to give you my name, Halim. It means forbearing. It's the attribute of Allah where he does not punish you right away for the violation of his law. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, yes, sir, brother minister. He said, Abdul Halim. I said, well, how do you spell it? And I asked him, he said, you can spell it either way you want to. I chose H-A-L-E-E-M, Halim. That's how I chose to spell it. But then he that's gave me, that, and that was his name yes. when I met him. He was Abdul Halim Farrakhan when I met him. And that's the first time I saw that name, I saw it in your office on the picture that he signed, and it has that name, Halim. So it's interesting how that, that all comes, right? And as we go, because I, I don't want to hold you up there, I got to squeeze these other questions in. What can you, I, now I'll say this, when the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan wrote the letter that appeared in the Final Call newspaper about our brother, Brother Abdul Hafiz, Brother Halim, I really asked myself, I said, I said, man, I wonder if Brother Hafiz really knew or really felt how the minister loved him. Like when the minister talked about in the prayer line, how it impacted him and how he felt. And I'm not saying that brother may have not, but I wonder, you know, like, do we know? Because sometimes we know the minister lover, but do we have an idea of how much? And you can tell he had a great love. He has a great love for our brother. So can you share with those who are watching what you have witnessed and seen and heard of the minister's love for the believers and even his laborers? You know, brother, a man with a job like Minister Farrakhan has, and as I said, as the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has, is always looking for help. And do you know how, how much it takes or how long it takes to make a laborer a real functional seasoned laborer, wow. a seasoned minister? Mm. And you think about Brother Hafiz, man. He played, he was a Faithful since a teenager, just like me. He came in the mosque as a teenager, man, and soldier. He was always a backup. He was a backup to, 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 uh, to uh, every minister that served in New York. He was a backup. They would get sat down or, or, or go somewhere else, and he would be, he would stand in for them, and then they'd pick another one. Mm. Then he would sit. Then they get they get removed or they move on. 
he'd step in again and again and again and again. And finally, he became the minister and he became the Eastern Regional Minister. Wow. That man was a faithful soldier. And let me tell you something, man. His name was Hafiz because his memorization of the lessons, being a five percenter as he was, but he had this tremendous memory. And we have uh, brother uh, Waliula, Waliula on the, on the line right now. Brother U used to be known as Brother U. He could bear witness, man. Hafiz was something, man. You know when it came to, you know, like he's like one of those companions, brother. It, what reminded me of this is when Brother Hafiz returned to Allah after the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, passed away and Abu Bakr was the, the, the Khalifa, the Muslims had a battle, the Battle of Yamama. And many of the Quran, meaning the reciters of the Quran, were killed in the battle. And it was at that point that Umar came to him and said, you know something? We need to write the Quran down and put it in one volume. Mm. And he said, well, how can I do something that the prophet himself, peace be upon him, never did? And he convinced him to do it. And he went to Zaid and he told Zaid and he told him to do the same thing. He said he had the same response to Abu Bakr, but they wound up taking the Quran and putting it in one volume because the companions were getting killed off. Man, Brother Hafiz is institutional knowledge, brother. I'm institutional knowledge. That's a fact, man. And 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 what has to happen is, is that if I should pass away or something happened to me, say I get set down because someone's better at this time, brother. I should not pull out and not pass on my institutional knowledge so that my, the next person that comes after me has to start from scratch. That's mm. that's 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 crazy. Mm. So the impact is, is that Mr. Farrakhan loved this brother, but he loves you and he loves mm. all of us, man, like that. He loved that same way because each one of us, whether we sold one Final Call newspaper, gave one dollar in charity, brought one lost found to the mosque, man, mm. please, we helped him in the mission. He has the hardest job of any man on the planet. And let, let me close this point with this, brother. Well, I'm, I'm going to drive this point home, especially to these Negroes that be be as as brother uh, brother uh, uh, out of uh, Fort Worth. He calls it dry brother hating. Oh, not 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 the minister, not Lee, but it is protocol director. Yeah, they, they they be dry hating on the minister, brother, and I, it, it gets under my nerves. But here's 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 the point, brother. The minister did, which literally would appear to be impossible. Why do I know that Minister Farrakhan is the Jesus in our midst? Mm. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. Farrakhan raised a nation from the dead. Ooh, good point. Against the wishes of Mecca, against the wishes of Christendom, against the wishes of the Jews, against the wishes of Negro leadership, against the wishes of, uh, uh, of the US government. He raised a nation from the dead. Mm, that's a, if God, that's... If, if, if that man ain't God, if that man is not God representative, then there is no God. Wow, that's a, that's a very, very good point. And, and I've heard that taught I like the way what you use that in regards with that Lazarus, and that's that's an example. And while we're in that in that vein, when we talk about the minister, the, we've heard the minister talk about how he has listened to somebody talk about what they were going through, and even though he never experienced it, at the end of the conversation, he was so drained because he felt what they felt. Right? What have you witnessed and experienced about the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan? A uh, great level of empathy. Well, when you love like he loves, right? And you really practice, one of the golden rules of Islam is you want your brother and sister what you want for yourself. Well, do you want somebody, if you want it for your brother and sister what you want for yourself, you don't want them to be in pain or distress. 
So when he's listening to these stories, it affects him like that because he loves like that. See, Mr. Farrakhan's love, brother, is supernatural. Mm. You see, if somebody, you know, like old Teddy Pendergrass is so good loving somebody and somebody loves you back and that's a fact, that's kind of natural love, right? Mm -hmm. And if somebody loves you and you don't love them, that's kind of unnatural. But when you love whether a person loves you back or not, that's supernatural. It's above nature. Farrakhan is a supernatural being in our midst. And the self-improvement study guides is his sunnah on how we can become supernatural. Mixed feelings and controversy, how do we handle it? Overcoming difficulty, how do we handle it? You know? Mm. So all of those things, rising above emotion into the thinking of God, the law of God, respect for authority. You know, all of these, these things that somehow we made into cliches are actually the means by which we can be, including our FOI and MGT classes, that we can grow into being gods. Follow Farrakhan, as the messenger said. But he loves like that, brother. And his humility, the characteristic of humility really is the key. So I guess we can, with, with that point, I can lead into this next question. And I don't know if you might go more into that. Um, if there was any, if there was one thing that if Allah told you, Brother Abdul Halim, I'm going to give you one thing that I'm going to allow you to be able to get everybody, to get many others to see and know about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. What would be that one thing? Love. Mm, and why love? Because love is a creative force out of which everything comes. Farrakhan, because of his love for his teacher, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, Allah and our people, out of that love, man, he raised a nation from the dead from nothing. He didn't have no 10,000 followers. He didn't have any money. He didn't have anything. But the love for his teacher, Allah and his people. And it was Brother Jabril, Brother Abdul Wahid, his family, and then those who came along to help him while we are where we are today. Love. With a worldwide address that's going to be made on, on July the 4th. All the Negroes have spoke, all the Negro whisperers have spoken, all those that make white folks feel comfortable or just a little bit uncomfortable have spoken. All of them have spoken, police, experts, government people, governors, presidents, vice presidents, senators, Congress people, all these so-called experts and scholars have spoken with. The man that everybody really is listening for is Farrakhan. What does real justice look like? Mm. Mm. So my point, is, uh, my, my point is love. Out of love, brother, all, all of this is possible. God is love. So when you slip that around, love is God. Mm. So if I had to say any one thing, it would be love because love is God and God is love and God and what is God? Not only who is God who came the person of Master Father Muhammad, but what is God? It's force and power. Mm. So mm. Farrakhan's love is a force and a power that has moved the material universe to answer his prayers. Right. I've seen that man, brother Willie, listen to me. We were in Jackson, Mississippi. I think it was 92. And Minister Farrakhan, brother Jamil didn't come and I had to raise the money charity. I raised the charity. And Mr. Farrakhan challenged, this is the wrath of God, Mr. Farrakhan challenged them because they had hung Brother Charles's stepson in jail. And he challenged them preachers like Elijah challenged uh, those false prophets of Baal. He said, if your God is God, then 
Make, see him bring fire down out of the sky. And at the end of it all, he said, you know, he said, my God, you, you bring your God will forgive me. My God, I pray my God will kill them. Later on in that evening, after his speech, we were in the suite. And I'm not saying these things to brag, brother, but I do want to get them on the record. Yes, sir. That That's way, if I ever deny the minister, brother, you can pull this tape out, man, and say, that Negro lying, he don't know far come. The minister said to me, he said, he said, he went around the room, he asked me, he said, brother, how did you get here? I said, we told, brother minister. He said, how, how many hours was that? I forget how many hours it was, maybe six, seven hours. And he frowned. He said, no, brother. He said, I don't want you driving that, that distance. You're too valuable to me. And then he must have sensed how everybody took him in the room. He said, y'all, then he turned, he said, you're all valuable. He said, no, brother, I'm going to pay for you a plane ticket. Wow. I got on an airplane, and I'm going to tell you the truth, brother. I wish I would have drove back. A storm was coming out of the Gulf as I'm flying back from Mississippi. Man, that plane was going like this, man. My, my throat, my stomach was in my throat, brother. <laughs> brother. And it rained literally 40 days and 40 nights. And the first levee that flooded and broke was in that very place in Jackson, Mississippi, where that brother was killed. Man, last point, brother Khalil and I, the way we learned security, brother, was we followed the minister around, just like uh, uh, brother Abdul Sharif and, and brother Akil and them used to follow the minister around. We used to do that too, to do security. And... We were at the Kennedy Center. The minister had just gave a speech at the Kennedy Center. And at the end, he said to them, I'm going to Libya. And I dare you. I think he was talking to Reagan at the time. Might have been 85. And he says, and to prove to you that God is with me, and as he says, touch not my anointed, do him no harm. He said, in 30 days, God will show you that he's with me with the forces of nature. And in a sense, he, he might have said, I saw him like him and drop the mic. I, I might be a little bit too dramatic, but it was something that that's the feat. That's how I remember. And I remember, I remember. Brother, it wasn't 28 days. It wasn't 31 days. It was 30 days on the nose, man. A whole slew of tornadoes came through, like Pennsylvania, Ohio, that area, man, and tore it up on the 30th day. I said, you know something? It's like the scriptures say, who is this man that the wind and the seas obey him? Mm. Remember when Jesus said, peace be still? Oh, brother, to mm. walk with that man, brother, is to walk with God. I thank Allah for my father and my mother on this Father's Day. I'm going to have to go because I got a 3.30 call. Yeah. Let me say this, brother. I'm sorry that I came on late. Good. But I do want to say this. I thank Allah for my mother and my father, just as Brother Ishmael thanked Allah for his mother and his father, to be born in the time of the Messiah and to be one of his helpers and for him to give me a big name to live up to. Mm. And he said to me in that July 1st, 2016 meeting, he said, Brother, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said many things that he didn't do in the time that he was among us. He said, I have come and I've tried to do those things. He said, there's things that the minister has said, brother, that I have not accomplished. He said, you have the power, brother, to accomplish those things and put over the program of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. He said, be found doing it. I say that to you and all of our listeners and viewers. You, in your city, you, in your person, have the power to put over the program the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and help the Honorable Louis Farrakhan in those things that he have not accomplished while he was among us before he goes to the Father. Be found doing them. Nobody's going to stop you, and you don't have to ask permission to do what he's asked us to do. Just let somebody know what you're doing in case you uh, run out of juice and need some help. Thank, thank you. Thank you, my brother. And uh, for those, I know you got to go on your... Um on your next call. And thank your wife too for, for allowing us to have your time. And for those who are viewing on Facebook and on um, Zoom, 
type some message. What what stood out to you about this particular uh, testimony? What what did you learn? What did you gain? You know. And also, I know you're about to go, but for those also who are watching, our regional headquarters is right now in the midst of a fundraiser to raise funds to complete the renovation of the of their of of our miles. Right. So I'm going to I shared it on my page. I'll share some more. But we're asking you to to give. It says forty five dollars for for it for number 45, you can give more and more, but if you can't give, at least share it. Share it with 10 other people. They have money to give and to actually to, to actually do that. So thank you, Brother Regional. And we're gonna, we're gonna post this and we're gonna post this on, on our, um, what do you call that? On, on YouTube. But remember for the people that are watching, please take a moment and just, what did you get? He says there's so much, so many stories that he shared. And but you're tempting me right now, Brother Reed. You're about to make me ask you another question. If you need to get off, you can get off. You can get off. You can, you can get off. So I'm going to I, close out. I got answers, brother. I got I answers. <laughs> I'm, I'm about to ask, but I'm going to let you go get on your call. But but for, as we get ready to close out, but thank you, Brother Reed. I'm going to do our closing announcements. But thank, thank you, you, and may Allah continue to bless you. And may he bless you also. Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum salam. And for those people that are still watching, we just want to go over these, these announcements again. As we said, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan will be speaking on July the 4th. So make sure that you pass the word and, and share it, and we'll post it. Also, follow us on Instagram, Miles number 46, 46 AV. You see that? If you have somebody that you want us to pray for, also make sure that you, uh, you sub submit their names. And here, we're also in the midst of our mortgage fundraiser as well. So you saw it. Go ahead and donate something. Whatever you have to donate, we're trying to get 163 people to give $1,000, right? So please help us out. And on next week, we're going to have, inshallah, inshallah, we're going to have our sister who's going to join us, Sister Shalim Muhammad. So make sure that you're on, you're on board and make sure that you're here. It's at 2 o'clock. Every Sunday as of right now is at 2 o'clock. Thank you all. May Allah continue to bless each and every one of you all. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum.